Thanks very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for having this hearing, and thank you to our witnesses. Um, I think we're all repulsed by the skyrocketing hate crimes that have occurred across the country. Connecticut is no different. Uh, there have been a number of very concerning hate crimes against both Muslim Americans and Jewish Americans in Connecticut over the past few years. In fact, we've seen uh, 158 anti-Muslim hate crimes reported in 2022, up from 2021. And according to the Anti-Defamation League, there's been a huge increase in anti-Semitic incidents within Connecticut, specifically since 2020. At the University of Connecticut alone this past year, 76 bias complaints were filed by both Jewish and Muslim students detailing incidents of discrimination and hate speech since the conflict in Gaza began on October 7, 2023. The numbers reflect only a small part of the problem because there has also been a failure or a lapse in reporting uh, hate crimes. And I know that our witnesses have called attention to that problem. Uh, there is a real need for more robust data in reporting hate crimes. And the reality is that the government statistics really fail to give us a full picture. Um, with your invaluable help, Ms. Berry, we've begun to make progress on this problem since 2021 and the Jabara Hire No Hate Act. I led that effort in the Senate with Senator Moran. Uh, key provisions of that act provide for grant programs, as you know, to incentivize state and local law enforcement agencies to better adopt hate crimes reporting measures that align with best practices. And yet, Despite these efforts, we still see insufficient data related to hate crimes on campuses, as well as in the community in general. So my question to you, um, with my thanks for your cooperation, your help on these measures, what can we do to support law enforcement's effort on reporting um, and build on the work that we started with the No Hate Crime Act? Thank you, Senator Blumenthal, for the incredible work that you and your staff did on securing passage of the COVID-19 and uh, Jabara Hire No Hate Act. Thank you. Um, as you said, um, it, it made a significant improvement. Um, three years later, we are seeing um, additional uh, community-based grants being issued by the Department of Justice that are attempting to address the problem of underreporting. Um, grants that are going to law enforcement agencies 100,000 or more, have you reported hate crimes, have you not? It's the issue of addressing the affirmative zero. It's hard to believe the number of municipalities and states in our country where they report that not a single hate crime has occurred. Um, so all of that, I think, has been tremendous progress. But you are correct in noting we're nowhere near where we need to be. And I think one of the most important things that we can do, and this is actually a change since we originally did the Jabara Hire No Hate Act to, to where we are now, is that there's an increase in supporting the measures of getting to mandatory reporting? How do we get to meaningful mandatory reporting? Can we tie it to funds that are already received by local law enforcement so that we can make sure participation in this is, is possible? The second part of this is we've also had a transition in the way that we report hate crime. And I think um, I can't stress enough the importance of NIBRS, our new national incident-based reporting system. Uh, it really does allow a local agency to go in having reported a hate crime and perhaps missed it to then upload it and be able to include it in that. So the importance of that is tremendous. The issue there is, are we getting all of the agencies to participate? And regrettably, we continue to see not enough agencies having fully transitioned to that. Do any of the other witnesses have any thoughts or perspectives on reporting? Thank you, Senator, for that question. Uh, yes, I think one challenging aspect of reporting involves the lack of clear definitions. A recent study found, for example, that the uh, Almost half of adult Americans don't know what the word anti-Semitism means, and those are the people willing to admit that in a survey. So I think the importance of clear definitions would only help with reporting. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, Senator, Mike. I, oh, oh, 
Go ahead. Yeah, um, I just think also that it needs to online and other ways to make it so that people understand not necessarily the road of definitions, but the, the tools, the support, the, the, the you know, Meta is um, one of the people working with us on this uh, eradicate hate potential project, the clearinghouse idea that people can find information from social media if they say, oh, I've been a victim of a hate crime to get the resources. And I think the easier we make it for people to get the resources they need, the more reporting we'll see. Thank you. My time has expired. This topic is hugely important and complex and challenging. And I want to thank all of you for being here. Again, my thanks to Ms. Berry in particular for your tremendous work uh, on this issue. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Blumenthal. Senator Lee. Thank you, Mr.